I'd like to show you around the image composite editor from Microsoft Research and you can see on the screen here some pictures that I've scanned converted to black and white and toned so that I'm happy with them so what I'm going to do is just switch over to ice and drag and drop those pictures in you can see we've got a link on the screen here for where to download the uh, software from and you can just go to research.microsoft.com and search for ICE. It takes a few seconds to process the pictures which we've speeded up and at the end you see the first pass attempt at the panorama. If you keep an eye on the notch that's missing out of the top edge of the picture, ICE didn't realize because these were scanned images they were taken by rotating the camera. So I've just changed the kind of motion and you can see the notch has changed its shape. I can also change the projection of the image so I can recenter it and I can change the projection method and when I'm happy with that I can then start thinking about how I want the final image to look so I can crop the image and typically I wouldn't crop it very tightly so that I can fill in some of the missing bits using the clone brush and once I've got that to a point that I'm happy with it I can then think about exporting it to disk so I can scale the image to the number of pixels that I want, uh, I can choose the file format that I'm going to save in, and if I'm saving as JPEG, I can set the quality level. But what I'm interested in doing for this one is actually publishing the panorama to Photosynth. Now, when we send it to Photosynth, we're not allowed to crop it. We do a quick check for updates to Photosynth and to see Photosynth is installed. So if you haven't installed it already, it will uh, help you uh, download and install Photosynth. And now I can sign into Photosynth and put in uh, some descriptive information about the panorama. Uh, so I can choose what's going to appear as the thumbnail. I can fill in a title. I can set the uh, copyright terms and then I can start it uploading to Photosynth. Now when I did this, this took several minutes and we're going to use the magic of video editing to skip forward here. So let's go and view the image now that it's been uploaded to Photosynth. And the Photosynth app is written in Silverlight using Silverlight Deep Zoom. And Although we've speeded up some bits of the video, this hasn't been tinkered with, so this is pretty much the experience I get on my home broadband connection. And you can see how Silverlight Deep Zoom lets us zoom in and look at the picture and so on. Now, one of the interesting things to do is actually to geotag this picture. So if I click geotag, I can just zoom in to where this is. And again, you can see pretty much the uh, real experience that I was getting and just keep zooming in to Brighton and we can just see the pier coming up here so I'm going to zoom in to the pavilion on the pier and just drag and drop the push pin and that will geotag the picture for location now because synths in Photosynth are often geotagged they don't have to be but they often are we can actually go and in explore uh, and look for other synths in the same place. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill back to the same place and you can see here's a synth that I actually made and the dive in feature is one of my favorite features in this integration here that you can see the aerial view swivels round and then we swing into uh, the synth and if I move round and just look to my right over here we can see here's the end of the old pier and here at the seaward end you can see the burnt out wreck at the far end of the pier. So there you go, integration with Bing Maps, Photosynth and Panoramas.